Welcome to my physics class. My name is uh, James Miner. Um, in, in our lesson today, we would like to discuss um, a Form 1 topic. So, Form 1 physics. And the topic that we would like to continue with is a topic we had already started on, that is uh, pressure. And we had already discussed pressure in solids, pressure in liquids, and uh, we need now to move on to pressure in gases. In particular, we are going to look at uh, pressure due to um, the atmosphere, which we also call atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. Now the earth is surrounded by um, a layer of gases, we normally refer to this as the air, air around us. So air consists of uh, several different gases. In air we have carbon dioxide, we have oxygen that we breathe, we have many other gases. Now as uh, we move from the surface of the earth upwards, uh, if we think of um, uh, the earth, uh, as a sphere, and that's where the sphere is coming from, um, around the earth we have what we could call a layer. So let, let's think about it as a, a layer of gases, this is the, the earth. So as we move from the surface of the earth, we find the air which you have seen is a combination of gases. Now, just like the pressure experienced by a person who, who is swimming in, in, a, in water or in a, in a liquid, we are also in a sea of air. We obtained a formula for working out the pressure due to a liquid column. The same formula, this one, where we said uh, pressure equals height times density times pool of gravity, can be used to calculate the atmospheric pressure. Now, to determine the atmospheric pressure, we need to make a simple barometer. And I think it's also worth noting that the, the atmosphere thins out as we move further from the Earth's surface. That's why there is less oxygen on top of a mountain. Now, at sea level, that's where we have the greatest effect of atmospheric pressure. So, in our lesson today, we want to see how we can determine in the lab the atmospheric pressure and we require, first of all, a uh, one meter long a uh, hard glass tube, glass uh, tube. And now this tube is filled with mercury and we ensure that there are no bubbles. So we're going to look for a tube which will be one meter long this can be done in the laboratory and with a lot of care because mercury is a, a poisonous substance. So one requires the necessary protection, the gloves, the eye protection and all that. So in the lab, we will need a, a trap. We need to have a, a trap. filled with mercury so that trap will have mercury this is 
Mercury. And then we've also talked uh, about a tube, very strong uh, glass tube, uh, approximately one meter long. And this tube will be filled with uh, mercury. We are saying what you do is pour the mercury into the tube. Um, uh, remember the hand, the, the hand is covered uh, in gloves, they are, they, we are wearing gloves. And then we cover the top of the tube and invert it several times. And every time we turn it the other way around so that the open end is up here, we remove the finger so that any, any bubbles in the mercury will escape. And then we place the finger, or we feel uh, again, we fill the tube once more and place the finger again and invert several times and every time the bubbles will come out and we we'll keep on refilling until we are sure that um, there are no more bubbles in the mercury because this would affect the accuracy that is got in our experiment. So finally, we will invert this tube in the mercury and move the finger when it is under the mercury then observe um, the level of mercury go down until the point where it will not be going down anymore so this tube will be inverted in the mercury like that like that and the finger removed and we are saying that the mercury level will go down until we reach a given uh, height. Now, after the the mercury level has, start, has stopped going down, we need to measure this height. And if this is done at sea level, we will have a column of mercury approximately 76 centimeters uh, long. At that point, this will now be a vacuum, what we call the Torisserian vacuum. Torisserian vacuum. The Torisserian vacuum. And uh, this one is now the mercury. And we've said that this is a glass tube. And this is uh, a trough. Containing mercury. Now, the reason why the mercury goes down up to a certain point is that the pressure exerted by the atmosphere will support this column of mercury. In other words, because of the air around us, the, 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 that air exerts a force on the surface of mercury and therefore stopping any further uh, movement of mercury out of the tube. And this is acting uh, on, on the whole surface. And therefore we say this column of mercury is supported by the atmosphere. Then from there we can work out the value for atmospheric pressure from the formula P equals H rho G whereby we use the 76 centimeters as the height then the density of mercury is known is 13600 kilogram per meter cubed and then the pull of gravity 10 newton per kilogram and when this is um, worked out, we will get a figure for the atmospheric pressure. We've already mentioned that since the atmosphere thins out as we move further away from the surface of the earth, this pressure is not a constant um, uh, value. It will change dep depending on um, where the experiment is being done, the height above sea level. And therefore, um, that is how we work out or we get a value for the atmospheric pressure. Once again, it is the pressure due to the air around us. The air, which we've said, is a mixture of gases. And um, the atmospheric pressure 
is found to be able to support a column of mercury 76 centimeters long. Now, knowing that this is the atmospheric pressure, suppose this experiment was done with water. What would we expect to be the column of water that can be supported uh, by the atmosphere? What column of water can be supported by the atmosphere? That is, if we were to use water and not mercury, mercury what would be the columns that are supported? I think we would just use the same formula, but this time we know we have water, we know the density of water, and uh, it's a 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed, and then we work out the required height. So we are going to stop there for now. In the next lesson, we are going to look at the total pressure experienced by a diver. Uh, this time we will consider also the atmospheric pressure. So for now, we stop at that point and um, we meet again in the next lesson.